Hey, I'm Shy Fox, and this video is going to cover Clip Studio Paint basics, things you need to know before you even get started painting in the program, and hopefully I can simplify a bunch of it so that it's not so overwhelming when you get started because it definitely is. Anytime you're getting going in a new program, maybe you're switching from another, maybe you're a first time digital artist, that's a lot of us, a lot of you guys, so this is especially for you. So to get started, once you've of course downloaded the program, you're going to be able to open one of two things. You'll be able to open Clip Studio Paint itself. I would say it looks like this, except yours is probably going to look a lot different as I've arranged mine differently to suit my needs lately. And I'll show you how to do that as well. The other thing you're able to open besides the program itself is the Clip Studio Paint uh, Manager, which has all this stuff. It has a modeler, which is really cool. That's kind of advanced. And then good to know about the Clip Studio assets where you can get brushes and th like extra brushes from the community. I have other videos on my channel, by the way, I have a whole playlist that I'll link you guys top right for uh, learning how to do more Clip Studio Paint things, including importing assets, aka brushes and things. So that's a little beyond what we're gonna do here, but this is the other window to be aware of as uh, it, it's kind of like your menu for all things Clip Studio, for managing your works, uploading it to the cloud, the Clip Studio Paint has a cloud that you can transfer between different devices, which is really useful. I have an iPad Pro as well as my PC and I transfer through the Clip Studio Paint Cloud. You just log in, that's really a cool like bonus. One of the many great things about this program, I rave about this program, it's my absolute favorite. So anyway, I'm gonna move that away and let's get started. So you're looking at Clip Studio Paint, probably looks different than mine. Really where we wanna start before we even hit like file new is window. So window here has everything that is in the program in terms of like little panels for things. All right, so command bar, if I get rid of command bar, you can see and bring it back. You can see this has various things. Uh, just some quick shortcuts is kind of what the command bar does. Quick access, my quick access is here. You customize that and that lets you put like buttons on. It's just hotkeys of your own essentially, kind of like hotkeys. And so there's a whole bunch of panels you may or may not want open. Tool is kind of like a, you definitely want this one open. It's your tool bar. And the cool thing about all these windows is they can be picked up and dragged. Did you catch that? Like little tabs, you know, like an internet tab, like any sort of tab, I'm trying to drag it. This one's like skinny. I'm gonna try and drag it there. Wait, there, <laughs> put it back. And then you can stretch them, rearrange them. So one of the beauty bits, beauty bits, sure. One of the beautiful things about <laughs> this program is the fact that you can drag any panel around, move them and arrange this the way that you like. We've got like our layers panel here, useful, right? And if you have issues with layers too, I got you covered. So the key ones are going to be, of course, your tools. We need to have like the pencil um, and just everything else. Fill bucket tool, pen tool, selecting tools. That's all in there. Sub tools is a really big one. So sub tool is this one here. You click on a tool, you click uh, inside sub tool and it gives you all. It's exactly as it is worded, a sub of that tool subtype of that tool. So if you have pen, we got lots of different kinds of pens. Mine's customized from importing things and doing things. So you might have ones, they will look different. So the G pen is a great standard pen. Pencil, we've got design pencil, real pencil, you click on them. These are all the sub tools. So that if you did have a canvas, you would see that they drew on the cabinets in different ways. So you can check out what is inside each of these. Another thing to kind of note is that your sub tools have tabs as well that will have different things in them. So the, I think this is like the, the decoration tool has lots of different decoration uh, things. So they're tabbed differently. So there's a, there's a whole tab in the sub tool of decoration dedicated to flowers. So 
yeah, if it's maybe easier than actually drawing flowers, you might have reason to decorate as this tab puts it. So you can look through all of these. I'm not obviously going to go through every single one, but there is lots of really, really very, very useful things in here. So you can just familiar, familiarize yourself with that. Other important things after sub tool is tool property. We're getting even more specific. Let's look at something basic pencil and we only have one tab under pencil. You could make a tab. You could literally drag one of these. You could add one, make one, drag it. And is it going to work? Yes. I made a whole new tab. Okay, cool. You can make tabs. Very customizable program. I love it. So the tool property tab is the tab that lets you modify, tweak, and do whatever to the specific tool. So let's say we have design pencil selected. Ooh, we can see we have things like brush size, opacity, thickness, all this other stuff. Uh, stabilizer is one of my favorites. And so every tool is probably going to be showing different uh, tool property settings. A key point to note is that if you're missing, let's say you're like, oh, where's my stabilizer? Because that's a that's one I talk about. I need a stabilizer for my pen tool. I don't see one. It's showing here. This is really important. There's a little wrench button down at the bottom. Show sub tool deal. <laughs> Gosh, let me try again. Show sub tool detail palette. If you click it, It'll bring up something like this, which gives you so many more settings, all the possible settings that you could tweak for each tool type. So for example, we'll go down to correction because this is where my stabilizer is. And if you turn it off the eyeball, it disappears. It's supposed to disappear, right? There we go. I was clicking the wrong thing. <laughs> it disappears eyeball. So you can choose which actual like sub tool, sorry, tool properties you want showing or not. So that's just really important to know. It gets complicated. You're probably like, what the heck are all... It's okay. You probably won't even need to open this thing up. Like I almost never open it up. It's just important to know that it's there. In general, you have so many different possible pens and tools, you're going to spend probably very little time actually tweaking a lot of these settings. You might, you're going to tweak brush size, obviously. That's what like this whole panel is for. You're going to tweak um, uh, opacity, maybe. You might just have different brushes that are more opaque than others. So try not to get overwhelmed. You mostly want to just probably focus on the fact that there is a sub tool palette and there's different like brushes and things inside of it. If you can get that far and adjust the brush size and pick a color, you're well on your way to doing, you know, great things. So we've got window. What else do we have? Subtool detail. We were just looking at that color wheel is probably your main one for colors. There's these other ones for colors that you can look at layers. Uh, the layer panels, one you're going to want to have as that it's going to show your layers and what other ones are important. We're not worrying too much about animation right now. You can do simple animations with uh, Clip Studio Paint Pro. I think you're limited to like 25, maybe 30 frames for frame by frame animations. Pretty cool. That's kind of where the EX, you know, do I need Clip Studio Paint Pro only if you're doing like comic books and doing things like elaborate animations. So that's usually where EX comes in. Otherwise, the Pro is fantastic and a good price. Uh, what other ones? Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Those are kind of the key ones. You might want your navigator, which if you had a canvas, let's just toss one on our screen. It just kind of shows you, um, um, what does it show you? Uh, the, the gosh, the canvas on here. So anyway, I'm going to just move our navigator back over here. This is just kind of how I have things arranged. My again, brush size is hidden over here. So those are your windows in generally what they are, sort of the important ones. And uh, just the fact that they can be tabbed is kind of noteworthy. See how this is layer and then I have my history tab here. And of course my color wheel ta is tabbed with some of the, like the color palette tabs. So the fact they tab is kind of nice. Something else that's kind of nice is floating canvases. So let's say I'm drawn here. Where's my pen at? I don't know. I want my color wheel back, my actual art pen. So I'm drawing with my mouse. That's why it looks like 
interesting okay interesting you can have multiple windows multiple canvases open so this one's going to be a different picture aren't you just like super impressed with my art isn't it great that like me i am teaching people how to art when i any focus so we have different canvases here you can let one float i just dragged it out again like a tab you can also so you can have one floating maybe a reference image or something for one you could also drag it and boom you've split your canvas workspace into two so you could work on one work on the other color pick from one bring it over to the like whatever you want to do you can do as many of these windows as you can fit not to mention you can drag this window off the screen onto another screen you can't see my other monitors but yes i just drug it off onto a different monitor there it is a different monitor so lots of things you can do in terms of that as well very useful and if we're gonna actually go into create a canvas let's close these masterpieces that i've created oh i didn't save them what a shame so file new of course and it's going to bring up your new window the main things you're going to probably just ignore these unless you're making comics so regular illustration don't really need to worry about too much canvas sizes depending on what you're making uh there's like presets you can we won't worry about presets so Pick your size, general note, 90 DPI is the resolution. So I'd put 90 if I was doing something for digital purposes, 300 is what I would use if I was doing something for printing purposes, if I was gonna print it, okay? But uh, the pixel size, or if, if you wanna do it in like inches, your units are over here. So pixels, this is in pixels, inches, centimeters, and that changes what these are. So. Uh, depending on the type of art you're gonna make is gonna determine the size of the canvas you need to be careful though if you make your canvas too big it's really gonna slow down your computer you might actually find yourself lagging so depending on the kind of art you might want to quickly research what is a common size of canvas for this type of art so just do that and then this button is a nice and fancy record time lapse if you would like the program to record your art process then click that click OK and then when you have drawn a decent amount you can go to file time lapse and then export time lapse and it will show you the whole process I pretty much always keep that on I think it's also nice to have as like evidence I created the art or just fun to share with people so that's pretty much the deal with that so we would create a canvas I have hotkeys so we have a canvas blah 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 we're ready to start so now you kind of have a basic overview of what goes into clip studio paint and like kind of what you need to know before you get started if there's questions you guys have that i didn't answer definitely comment them and i will either respond and answer it or make a whole other video to answer it because i am trying to do my best to help you guys and videos are often of course obviously that's why we're here one of the best ways to explain things to you guys now layers themselves is a topic that a lot of people really struggle with so again if layers is difficult for you i have a whole video dedicated to that so if you want to learn about that i have that video and other clip studio paint and digital art tutorials on my channel i have a playlist linked in my description and i'll clip it to the video so that you can find it easily and then what else do we got to tell you before we're done here questions comment them uh, subscribe if this was helpful and i'm totally not looking at my notes on what i was gonna tell you guys i'm rusty digital art guides and i covered it all great okay you guys thanks for watching have a good one Bye bye